Okay, good morning. Good. Turn my video off. Let's turn it on. That would be better. Sorry about that, slight technical glitch, completely unable to turn my video on, which doesn't really help matters, does it? Um, <laughs> welcome everyone, and um, welcome to our um, training uh, webinar today uh, with me, Andy Walls, and Claire Evans of Anderton Park Primary School, who, if you're like me, you can see on screen, weaving and smiling <laughs> benignly upon us all there. Um, and we're looking to welcoming new arrivals in your primary school. Um, we've got 63 people in the, in the house at the moment. Um, so if I could kindly ask you to turn off your, your videos, uh, uh, turn off your cameras uh, and put yourselves on mute, um, otherwise you'd probably crash uh, your own broadband if not everyone else's. So thank you for that. Lovely to see you. There it is. Um, uh, and thanks for taking the time uh, away from your college, school, college or setting to be with us today. Um, as I said, we're, we're looking at welcoming new arrivals into your primary school, uh, particularly those with English as an additional language. Uh, obviously starting a new school, as, as, uh, as you'll know very well, can be tough for any child, they're scared, they're nervous, uh, and they're adjusting to the new environment and making friends, and that's particularly tough, of course, for those where, where um, English isn't their first language or they don't have any, or indeed, no, uh, they have no proficiency in English. And um, so Claire today is going to be looking at best practice in welcoming new arrivals uh, and how we support their academic and pastoral development in the classroom uh, and in school life more generally. Um, I'll just say a little bit about Claire, a little bit about Flash Academy, a little bit about housekeeping. Uh, and then uh, I'll give the floor to Claire. And um, so Claire is uh, Deputy Head of Anderton Park Primary School in Birmingham at the moment, although she tells me she's uh, got a special new job lined up. Uh, so she's going uh, to transfer over to a primary in West Brom. Um, uh, and uh, so she's looking forward to doing that. Um, Anderton Park is a very ambitious and positive school, surrounded by a fantastic community and committed to providing an outstanding education for pupils at the school and I can say that because I know Claire and I know her head as well. Um, uh, one, of the, one of the things about Anderson Park is 99% of the pupils have English as an additional language and Claire tells me there are 37 different uh, languages spoken in the home uh, including uh, languages like Romanian, Pashto, Urdu and Arabic. Um, so there's a curriculum carefully tailored to meet their needs. Um, I'll just say a little bit about Flash Academy. Uh, NHC partner Flash Academy is a di digital English language platform uh, which helps hundreds of primary schools like Anderton Park uh, boost progress and learning outcomes for children with English as an additional language. Um, it delivers English language learning uh, from 45 home languages as well as English to English uh, to help ensure no child is left behind in their education. Um, you can access it on all devices and the platform supports curriculum learning uh, in the four areas of language development uh, to help pupils reach, reach their full academic potential and develop better social relationships. And that, of course, is so important for newly arrived children. But Claire can tell you more about that because she's been working with them for a while. Um, so just finally on housekeeping, uh, we'll share Claire's slides around with you um, within 24 hours of today's presentation. Um, if you open the uh, participants box, you can see what people have decided to call themselves today and they can see you. So just be aware of that. Um, there's a chat function down at the bottom there. So if you click on the chat box, uh, please put in thoughts, questions, reflections as we go along. We'll pick those up as we go along. Um, and hopefully have time for questions at the end and a bit of QA, a bit of interaction, uh, and then the dreaded poll at the end. But uh, that's quite enough for me. And I think everyone's now settled in and comfortable. So I'm going to drop off and Claire is going to entertain you. So Claire, over to you. Thank you very much. Let me just share my screen with you. Good morning, everybody. So thank you for that. Yes, my name is Claire Evans. I am deputy head at this wonderful primary school here, Anderton Park Primary. So we are in, um, in the heart of Birmingham. I've worked here for 14 years, um, so I definitely do love it. It's a great school to be in, great people to be in, great kids. Um, and yeah, so what I'm gonna do today, then I'm gonna talk you through some of the strategies that we use um, for our children who arrive with English as an additional language. And I'm gonna kind of split it up into a few parts. So. I'm going to talk about children who arrive mid-year who don't speak English or have minimal English. 
but I'm also going to talk about all the other children. So all of our children, the vast majority of our children, start nursery and reception with English as an Claire, you put yourself on mute. Oh, I haven't, I'm, I'm not quite sure what happened there. I didn't touch anything. You're back in the room, it's okay, I'll, I'll leave. Brilliant, thank you, I'm not sure. Um, I'll just recap that a bit again then. So our, um, our children, I'm gonna split this presentation into two parts. Our children arrive um, in school and reception with, with no, lang with no um, English or little English. Even though they might have been born in this country, they still learn their home language. And I, I guess that's the case for many of you as well. So I'm gonna talk about strategies that, um, that you can use in your classrooms to engage all learners. And I'm also going to, to talk about strategies to engage those children who just arrived mid-year um, from straight from another country with little or no English. So let's move on. Oh, I'm having a, there we go. Right, so there's the inside of our primary school here. Gorgeous primary school. Um, it's a Victorian building, lovely big spaces on the inside, we're so lucky. Lots of um, areas for books and for reading. So, I wanted to share this quote with you first. It says, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never get, forget how you made them feel. And I really want to think about that quote throughout this presentation. Because a lot of what we do at Anderson Park um, it's about engaging children and learning language, but also it's about making people feel welcome. A lot of our children um, arrive from countries where they haven't felt particularly welcome. We know that from having conversations with our children, especially if they've come from countries in Europe, they may have come from Afghanistan, they may have come from, from places where they didn't, they weren't made to feel like they belonged there. So it's really important to enable to, to make children and families feel that they are wanted here and that we will help them to settle. So please keep this quote in your mind. It was actually shared with me by um, one of my, uh, my old um, head teacher in the school that I went to. I, I, I made contact with him last year um, and we talked and he said this, this was really kind of what he stood by. And actually I thought, yeah, do you know what? It really, it's really important because um, feeling welcome then enables you to learn. And if you don't feel welcome, you don't feel happy in your learning, you won't feel in a place to be able to learn. So also the Bell Foundation, if you haven't yet used the Bell Foundation, Google it because they have a raft of resources there for EAL learners. And it says here that children learn best when they feel secured and valued. And that is that ties in with the Maya Angelou quote as well. So pre-webinar task then. So I did ask you at the beginning, um, I did ask the NHT to send out a little task for you to complete before, um, before the webinar. So if you could, in the chat, write down the meanings of these words. So you would have had time to, uh, to, to Google these words probably, find out the meanings. If you could write that down in the chat, that would be great. Okay, I'll just give it a few minutes. Okay, not sure. I haven't seen anything through there, but let's go through it together then. So, um, Agilas, this first one here means a person who never laughs. My gosh, how awful. A person who never laughs. Then we've got mel drop, which is a drop of mucus at the tip of the nose. Choir is two dozen sheets of paper and bombolate is to buzz or hum. So I'm hoping that you, uh, you scored four out of four on those ones. Right now, a little, a little, a little, I, I didn't actually send those out. So this was a, this was something that I wanted you to experience. So I didn't send, I didn't ask any HT to send out any, um, any words to you. I wanted you to experience how children might feel when they come to start in your school. Um, we tend to focus everything we do on reading, writing, learning, because that's what the, uh, that's what the national curriculum tells us. 
that's what we know children need to be at the end of key stage two, at the end of key stage one, they have to pass their phonics test. We have so much to do in schools where it's so important to learn vocabulary that sometimes we forget how children feel as learners. But let's have a look at this now then. So here's some new learning for you. So this first point, mel drop, can you remember what mel drop meant? So mel drop was a drop of mucus at the nose tip. There we go, new learning for you all today. Agilast is a person who never laughs, oh my goodness. Choir, two dozen sheets of paper. And bombolate, to buzz or hum. Okay, let's go back through those and I'm hoping that you have remembered them. So mel drop, just say it to yourself or you can write it in the chat, your choice. A drop of mucus at the nose, whether produced by it cold or otherwise. We all know those, don't we, when we go for a walk and it's cold. Agilas, love that word. Person who never laughs. Did you get that one right? Choir. Can you remember what that one means? Two dozen sheets of paper. Great word, choir. And bombillate. Did you get that one? Yeah, the buzz or hum, brilliant. Right, so you have just experienced then something that, um, that we um, call the learning line at Anderson Park Primary. And the learning line is, an, is, is a reference for all of us to remember how children learn. So before you came in this meeting, you came in, you probably got yourself a coffee, a cup of tea, sat down with your notepad, maybe you're at school, maybe you're at home, and you thought, right, I have got I've got what, half an hour now to listen and to learn, brilliant. I can sit back and relax. And that's what we call unconscious incompetence. And some of you may already know this model as well. You had no idea what I was gonna ask you to do today. And there's no reason you should, because I hadn't told you. We don't do that with children, do we? They don't know what they're going to learn. They might have a timetable, but they don't know the specifics of what they learn. So they have this unconscious incompetence. Then I told you that I had sent you some words and that I wanted you to write down their meaning. And suddenly you have conscious incompetence, utter panic. And you'll write down, down here in this, um, what we call, we call it the pit, <laughs> the dip. Uh, you're right down in here. You have utter panic now. You know that you can't do it. You, most of you probably wouldn't have known what the word bombolate meant or choir. Um, and there's no reason that you should know those. But as a child, we do this to children, perhaps on a lesson to lesson basis. Co sorry, conscious incompetence. Now I've taught it to you and you have realized you, you don't know how to do it. You have no idea. Put yourself in the, in the shoes of an EAL learner. They don't speak the language. They've just arrived at our school, at your school. Um, and we know the best way for them to learn is to be fully immersed in the language. So they go into class, they meet their friends, they are, they are in from day one. But that also fills them with utter panic. And when you are in that state of utter panic, there is no way that you can learn because you're in that fight or flight mode. So then we have conscious competence. That's when I taught you the words. You now know what choir is. It's two dozen sheets of paper. You know what bombillate means. It means to buzz or hum you know you're getting better because we practiced it, we went through it. And we do that with children, we practice things and we give them the strength and the courage to know that they're getting better. And when you've done that, you have what we call unconscious competence. You can do it without even thinking about it. If I said to you, what, does, what, uh, what is the word for to buzz or hum? You would tell me it was bombolate. You just know that now. But I really want to focus and to get your thinking around this part here this conscious incompetence, this utter panic. Because like I said, if children are in that state, they are not in a position to be able to learn. And it's really important with your strategies and some of the strategies I'm gonna show you today, that we enable children to come out of this state into the conscious competence, into the unconscious competence as soon as they can. So welcoming newly arrived children into your school begins from the second that you meet them for the first time. I'm not sure of practices in your school, so I'll tell you a little bit about, about what we do. 
Um, we have many children arriving every week. We have quite a lot of movement in Fenton Park um, Primary. Um, I inducted three children this week who were newly arrived. We had two from Sweden and um, one um, who has come from Pakistan. And they had not been to our school before. They had not met me before. So the first thing that I do is I meet them. So a senior leader meets them. They come in with their mums and dads and they come in for a meeting with me inside the school day so they can see everything that's going on. We sit down in my room and the first five minutes, I just go over out of my way to make them feel so welcome. Because like I said before, quite a lot of the children that will arrive mid-year haven't been made to feel welcome in school in, in other countries. A lot of children have and families have moved to the UK um, because they weren't embraced in other countries. They weren't tolerated. And they've had a pretty raw deal. So spend time getting to know them. I've, I've got here, ask relevant questions on your admission form. So find out what's a child's first language. Why have you moved to the UK? And you'll gain a real understanding about what exactly um, the family hoped to achieve by being here. And I know from every single interview that I have done that they, they come here to work, they come here for the education because they love our education system. And they've chosen your school. So I'm always really thankful to families um, that they have chosen us because they didn't have to choose us. You've chosen to come to our school and we are really, really grateful for that, really thankful. And your child will succeed at our school. We also spend time thinking about any previous schools so we can gauge where the child's at in their learning. Often in European countries, um, children don't start school until they're age seven or eight. So you might have some children who are arriving in year two or who are arriving in year three who have never been to school before. And that in itself brings those challenges of procedures, uniform, lunches, when to go to the toilet, the structure of the day. So it's really important to understand what exactly have they experienced before. And again, just make them feel welcome. I've had parents who've come in um, for a meeting and when we've, we've said, we are so happy that you're here, they started crying, which, which just feels, you know, just makes me feel so sad that they have come from countries where they were really not embraced or tolerated or included in many of the things. So going back to that Maya Angelou quote, it's about how we make them feel. So we always take time to talk to the child and some of you will be, um, familiar with these three houses because a lot of um, uh, child protection um, conferences, social workers, they use these three houses as well and we think it's a great idea so we use it with all our new starters. So we meet with the family, we meet with the parents and we find out a little bit about them, then we sit down and we talk with the children and find out starting our school what is it that they are looking forward to. Often a lot of them will say learning, a lot of them will say making new friends. I ask them about what they want to be when, um, when they're older. What do you dream about being? What do you aspire to be? We talk a little bit about that. We talk a bit about challenges, perseverance, determination. Things are tricky, learning will be hard, but we will try our very best to help you achieve. And then we talk about the worries because that's really important. Um, often children will, will tell me that they're worried about making friends so I know in my head then that when I go and introduce them to their class that I'm going to pick out three or four children who, who are waiting to be their friend. So that they know when they come in they're going to recognise some faces. So sometimes the, the worries will be I don't know where I'm going to get my lunch from or the worries will be which door do I enter in the morning and all these are perfectly legitimate and actually really important. So spending time talking to the child. Okay, so I talked a little bit about um, a friendship because it's so important to children. So day one, we would make sure that each child has a buddy, at least two buddies in case one of them is, is not in or is poorly or is somewhere else. And when I take the children to the class, I would have already spoken to the teacher. The teacher would have already spoken to the class, told them that somebody was going, somebody new was going to be coming in and the buddies will already have been chosen. If we can try and hit, look, uh, link people up with their home language, uh, we do that. It's not always possible, um, but wherever possible, link up with someone who shares the same home language. Um, and then just some great children. So we train up the buddies as well. So we make sure the buddies know that they have to show the new child where the toilets are, 
we make sure that they show them where to go at playtime, at lunchtime, um, and all the little things that children can help each other out on. We do that responsibilities. Um, and it really helps children to settle in and it really helps them to feel valued and to know that they have got friends waiting for them. And we find that this system works really well for us as well. Okay, so moving on past the day one. Um, check lunchtime arrangements with the, with the parents, with the children. We ensure that language support is in place. So we have a scheme of uh, work at Anderton Park, a language programme where children will learn language that they need to know. So they will learn phrases like, can I go to the toilet? I don't feel well. Um, can I have a pencil or just the word pencil? So real, really um, important pieces of vocabulary that they need to survive are, in, are included in our, in our scheme. And they have instruction in that scheme. So we would take out children for, for half an hour every day for specific vocabulary and language instruction. What's really important though is that that, that doesn't become an hour, two hours, three hours, because it's really important for the children to be in class, be with their friends and be learning. Because school is about so much more than, um, than reading, writing, maths, national, uh, national curriculum subjects. It's about the friendships, the relationships, and children working with each other. So all the time we ensure that children are inside the classroom as much as possible, but then we would take them out for that specific vocabulary and language instruction. Okay, right. So at Anderton Park then, let's talk about specifics about how it works at our school. So like I said, children are immersed in the language. In the class, learning, we have small group teachers with TAs, so that will be inside the class as well. We have well-structured reading lessons. So at Anderton Park, and I know many schools have done this, we, in years two and above, we did away with our, um, with our guided reading sessions and we have vocabulary and comprehension instruction lessons. We call it comprehending comprehension. And it is a reading lesson, a well-structured reading lesson, differentiated to meet the needs of all the learners in the class. And we also have quality vocabulary instruction. I'm going to show you a little bit more on this as we move through the, the presentation. We have two TAs who are TEFL trained and uh, our two TAs will be the, the TAs who take out the children for the structured um, language lessons. We also have Flash Academy, which I'll talk to you a little bit about as well. So Flash Academy is an app it started off as an, an app to learn a language, um, but actually the, the person, the CEO who, who, um, who started Flash Academy, VJ, he was, he was an EAL learner. He was one of these children who arrived mid-year in school with no English. So he has a real passion for this. So he has developed his, the Flash Academy app to help children who are newly arrived who don't speak English. So Flash Academy has tons and tons of languages on there. You select the language and it's an app based. Now, this is a win-win for us. Children love working on apps, on tablets, on computers. Yes, we know that. Teachers love specific apps that help children with their learning. And Flash Academy does this. So we run Flash Academy sessions with our newly arrived learners. Each child would get a, a login. They will get the vocabulary instruction from the TA, they will have the immersion in the language from the teacher, and they will also get specific um, sessions with Flash Academy in, in a group of children. And that's one hour per week in small groups. We also, because it was so popular and they loved it so much, we also said, well, you know, it's great, you're, you're learning language and you love it. Do you want to do a lunchtime club as well? So not only do they come in lesson time for an hour to use the Flash Academy app with their, with their friends. They also come at lunchtime for one lunchtime a week, which is amazing. And then to maximise usage, we got parents involved. So we invited the parents in, we got their children and we sat them with each other and um, we asked the children to show them the Flash Academy app. So show them how they're learning this language. And what worked brilliantly then is that the parents were then able to log on because they could download the Flash Academy app on their phone or on their tablet at home. And they were then able to learn with their child at home. So that was 
it was never hugely intentional in that way. We did think it would be a good idea to share it with parents, but actually in doing that, we're actually now helping the parents learn the language as well. So that is a real positive. Okay, so Impact of Flash Academy. So looking at the children who, um, who use the app, so these would be our newly arrived learners mid-year. So these would be not be our reception children. These would be children in years two, three, four, five, and six, who arrived mid-year from another country. And you can see there um, the, the points progress that they make. So on average, we expect our children to make four points progress throughout the year in our own assessment system. We found that from using Flash Academy, some children you made 12 points progress. Now that is phenomenal. And we know that children who learn English as an additional language make huge amounts of progress. Um, because they, they, once they start to pick up the language, they will really rapidly excel. But you can see here the impact. There is no doubt that using Flash Academy, it, it has definitely impacted on the learning of our EAL children. And they love it too. So it's win-win in my book anyway. And here are some photos, which I love this one here. Look, he's not even looking it up. This is him using the app here. This is Yosef. He's using the app. We're trying to take photos of him. Um, I'm pretty sure we were going, Joseph, Joseph. And he just thought, oh God, just leave me alone. I'm using my app. So here's my thumbs up. So here's him fully engrossed in his learning, having a great time. Here's our TAs, Kevl trained TAs, working with the children using the app. The children use the app independently, but then we would be there to facilitate and to help. Here we've got some, um, some children here showing them using the app to a visitor and we've got someone practicing their language skills. So what's great about Flash Academy is that the children have to speak into it and it will grade them and give them a green or a red if they need to keep pronouncing the words. So that's, that's not just about matching words, it's also about speaking and pronunciation. If you're interested in Flash Academy, get in contact with them or get in contact with me. If you're local to Birmingham, you're more than welcome, um, or even if you're not and you want to travel, you're more than welcome to come in and see how it works. We do that quite a bit for schools and, uh, and it always works really well, I find, when you can actually see children using it and talk to them. Right, so the immeasurable part. Immeasurable part. I've shown you the data. Um, I've shown you that children um, you use Flash Academy and make better than expected progress, but it's not just about that. Going back to our Maya Angelou quote, it's about the immeasurable part, the feeling of value. Um, children love using app, uh, apps, iPads. They get this special time just for them on an iPad, but they're learning language at the same time. It promotes inclusion. So we have lots of children working together on this. Children are engaged 100%. They love it. This next one reduces workload. Let me explain that one. So it can be hard for teachers and, and you're all teachers here. I know you are, I am as well. It's hard when you have a new child join your class who does not speak English. It's really tough. By having the Flash Academy app, the child can plug themselves in. They can have half an hour on their own learning and they are learning. It's not a cop out. They are learning language and the teacher can leave them to work independently, safe in the knowledge that they are learning. So it definitely does reduce our teacher's workload. Encourages children to work collectively and independently. Yes, they will sit there with their headphones, but then also they're in competition with each other. It's really good fun to watch. And enables quick rewards. Children know whether they've got it right, whether they've got it wrong, whether they need to repeat it. And what's great about the app as well is that if a child keeps, keeps getting a specific word wrong, it will remember it and it'll keep bringing it around. So it'll park the ones that they keep getting right and it'll keep bringing around the ones that they are struggling with. Brilliant. Okay, right, so that, that part, I, I want you to think about the newly arrived learners. So those are our children who arrive mid-year. What I want to talk to you a little bit about next is strategies that we've used and learned along the way at Anderson Park to help all children who have English as an additional language. So we make sure that we have text in every single lesson. P, art, RE, every single lesson there is a small piece of text so we are continually reading and unpicking language. I've spoken to you about our comprehending comprehension sessions. So we have daily, in, uh, daily sessions where we would read text together, 
um, discuss the text, unpick it, think about vocabulary, use the learner's dictionary. If you haven't um, seen that, go to Oxford Learner's Dictionary. It's, a, it's an online dictionary, but it will give you a real child-friendly and very specific and quite basic explanation of a word. Really useful to have. We also make sure that we have two inference questions in every say lesson. I've missed out the word there. Two inference questions in every lesson, continually unpicking that language. Because actually, when it, when it comes to inference, that's what EAL children struggle the most in. Oh, there you go, English lesson. Okay, I recommend that you buy this book. It's brilliant. It's very heavy, so don't read it on a Friday night or don't read it for light pleasure. You need to sit there with a highlighter in one hand, a pen in the other, and a pack of post-it notes. Um, it's a brilliant book. So bringing words to life, vocabulary instruction. So within this book, and I will just summarize some of the things in here, um, you have these, what they call tier one words. Now tier one words are your um, words that we use regularly. Can you find it? Find hand it, show, gather, try. These are all tier one words. We use them when we just want to ask people or each other to do things quickly. So what the recommendation in this book is to actually upstage these tier one words to tier two words and use them regularly. So tier two words are words that we don't use very regularly. Words like locate, identify, select, retrieve. They mean find, but more often than not, we will use the tier one word in its place. So this book really recommends using tier two words in place of tier one. So you might say, um, can you distribute the books for me, please? OK, can anyone locate a word that means, um, right, everybody, I would really like you to examine this piece of text now instead of look at. And it's from using those pieces of vocabulary that you will then upstage children in their vocabulary. We found that it has worked absolutely brilliant. And then we often find now that we expect children to use the tier two vocabulary and we will reward them for that. So buy the book, it's really good. Right, so in tier, um, tiers of vocabulary, like I said, we've got these everyday words here, tier one. Tier two, these are the words that you want to aim to increase in, in um, children, especially EAL learners, but actually all children as well. So they offer a great, greater level of precision and accuracy. These tier three words are subject specific. So you, things like photosynthesis or timbre in music. So they, those words aren't very common, um, but they, they're not used very commonly. It's the tier two words that you really want to increase um, and make sure that they are, are more common in the language that you use and the language that children use as well. I realize I'm whizzing through, but I just really want to share all these things with you. Um, so there are some tier one words to tier two words. Okay, they also talk about a six step approach to teaching vocabulary. And they would say, and we do this in our lessons as well, so we have vocabulary instruction. The teacher would have identified a piece of vocabulary that they want to teach the children, and it'll be one of these tier two words. So let's have a look. I'm just going to whiz on to the next slide. So the word then that we're going to learn is predominantly. So I have identified that I want to teach you predominantly. It's in this piece of text, and I really want you to understand what it means. So I look at it in its current context. When searching for food, they predominantly use their sense of smell. So the word we're going to identify today is the word predominantly. So then I would use the learner's dictionary, shortcut to learner's dictionary, um, and get a, defin a definition of the word predominantly. Share that with everybody so we all understand a really short, precise meaning for that word. Um, then we'd tap it out, we'd say the word predominantly, so we might say, right, how many syllables has it got in, um, right, can you tap it out, can you say it quietly, can you say it loudly, predominantly. So then we would broaden it. The adjective's predominant, so what does that mean? We know what predominantly means, what does predominant mean? Then I would challenge, 
Okay, so I'd say Miss Evans has many interests, but her predominant interest in art is art. What's your predominant interest? And see whether children can answer you um, in, in, this, in that context. Then reinforce. So now you need to know whether children have actually learned what the word predominantly means. So you're going to put it in a new context. The teachers in the school are predominantly female, everybody. Is that true or false? So now I'm checking your understanding of the word predominantly. This is all in that book that I shared with you. So again, I would really recommend um, you purchasing that. We would then expect the children to use that word predominantly and we'll reward them for it. So we use a reward system called Track It Lights and we, affect, we, um, we hand out um, track it's and they, they're like points, like has points. And so if a child uses predominantly in the correct manner, in the correct sentence, at some point in the lesson or day or week, they will be rewarded with track it lights because we really want to hear this vocabulary that we've been taught. Lots of us teach vocabulary, but we need to expect children to use it um, in order them to, to get better at it, to be honest. Right then, so thinking about reading. So thinking about being an effective reader. As an effective reader, you will automatically decode. You will become fluent. You will have great vocabulary, your oral language. You will have active in the moment strategies when you are reading. And this is taken from, um, from another set of training that we attended that, and you've probably been in this position. When you attend some training, you think, oh my goodness, this is amazing. It's so simple, yet this works really well. And we call it our in the moment of reading strategies. And I'm gonna share those with you. Now, you're all great readers. You all, I'm sure, read widely, you enjoy reading. And when you are reading, you're using strategies that you don't even know you're doing. So if you're reading and you get to a bit and your setting is on the beach, there is a bit in your mind that will bring up an image of a beach. And that might be because you've been to a beach. It might be because you've seen a beach. Um, a whole load of reasons. You don't even know you're doing it, but you do it because you've had those, because you've got those strategies and you've had that experience. Not all our children have had the same experiences, which is why we need to verbalise these in the moment reading strategies. So here they are. I'm going to leave this open and you will get the, the, um, the slides. Now we have these in every classroom. We have them on the back of every book as well. And these are sentence openers to help children understand, especially our AIL children who, who might want to say something about what they're reading, but they might not know how to verbalise it or how to, to make you understand what they're trying to say. For example, when we're reading text, everybody will have this. It's stuck on the back of their books. They'll flip their books open and we'll use our in the moment reading strategy. So I will say, right, let's use our in the moment reading strategies. Does anyone want to use any of their background knowledge, which is this bit over here? And we'll have children saying, oh, miss, it reminded me of another film. And they will tell me that. Or well, they might say, I remember a time when, and they will make a connection using their background knowledge. They might also say, I've made a text to self connection because I remember a time when I Da, 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 da. They might make a text to text connection. They might say, it reminds me of this other text that we read two weeks ago. And this, this here, these um, sentence starters are, they're like the vehicles. They give children the opportunity to say things like, I've got a picture in my mind when I read this. Or I was a bit confused here. My breakdown strategy worked or my breakdown strategy didn't work. Can anyone explain to me what this is? So it really enabled children to ask questions, to make comments, and we love using this. So let me just show you, I should have some photographs here. Here we go, look. So we have it on boards. This is an example of someone's display board in their classroom. We have it here, look, you've got um, the book here. You've got the child's book, they've got it in front of them and they're unpicking text and also looking at their prompts that are on the back of their book. We've got this little lad here. He is looking at a piece of text over here, but in front of him, he has got his in the moment reading strategies to help him understand and to unpick the text that they're reading. 
So that is the end of my presentation. I really hope that um, that has been helpful to you. Get in touch if you'd like to. There's my email address or you can, um, you can contact me via Twitter. I am not the oracle for EAL. <laughs> I don't have all the answers. Um, but we just found that lots of these strategies that we've been using over the years have really helped all our children to, to achieve. There we go. Thank you very much. Okay, <laughs> thanks very much, Claire. Uh, fab fabulous. And really, really enjoyed that. And it's great to have a presentation that's actually about pedagogical skills for change rather than about COVID or dealing with crisis. So, so that was great. Um, uh, just, just a quick apology as well, if I may. Um, that really annoying, annoying orange square is still there and it's been with us throughout. Oh. So, uh, yeah, sorry about that. We couldn't do anything about that. Uh, but we will send people the slides so uh, uh, you'll be able to see a clean version of that. Um, I'm just looking at the chat and people are saying thanks a million, thank you and brilliant. So that's, that's, that's really great. Um, we've got a little bit of time still left over if people would like to ask questions. Um, uh, if, you, if you would like to, probably the best thing is to just click your camera on uh, and appear magically on the screen, uh, like the man with the face at, at the end of Mr. Ben, uh, and, and ask a question directly. There's Alison Taylor. She's feeling brave. I thought she just pressed the wrong button. <laughs> no? Hello. I'm just trying to unmute myself. Hi, sorry. Um, Off you go, Alison. <laughs> just a quick question about the, um, the um, language instruction sessions, the 30 minutes a day. Um, is that a one-to-one -one session? No, that's in a place of guided reading. Right. Oh, no, sorry. Is that for the EAL learners? Yes. That's the EAL learners. Sorry. The, the instruction. That will, be, that will be for whoever is whoever needs it. So we've currently got a group of five children because they arrived at the same time and right. they had the same level. But it would be dependent on level and arrival. So it's not really a set. It might be a one-to-one -one if there's only one child that needs it. Okay. Okay. And um, in terms of um, talking to parents initially, um, do you have sort of interpreters in school? Do you, do you use interpreters to have those conversations to unpick um, their reasons for coming here and all the questions that you were saying you ask? Yeah, so um, it's a kind of a, it's, it's not a one, one size fits all for this. We right. kind of do our best. Um, we do always ask parents if they can bring someone with them who speaks English. So often they've come over here because they have friends or, or okay. family members. So we ask them to bring someone with them. We do have, um, we, we do have different members of staff who speak different languages and we rely on their goodwill so one of our one of our cooks in the kitchen speaks arabic so um, sometimes we just go and ask her if she can come out for 10 minutes and and do that one of our office staff um speaks romanian so we use them as well so we just kind of use it on a hodgepodge sometimes when there isn't that we do use google translate which works really well okay. so on our ipads you can speak in and then it will speak out in a different language. And I use that regularly. Um, it's not perfect, but in, in the absence of anyone else who speaks the language, it works. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Okay, th thanks a lot, Alison. Thanks for being brave and going first as well. If you'd like to click your camera off, we've got another couple of people. Um, hi. Yeah, Sinead Devi, do you want to ask? Yeah, hi, um, good morning. I just wanted to ask, um, when you were talking about the assessment, um, within the first two weeks. Um, is there a particular assessment you use? I mean, all the ideas that you were talking about, the fact that you're not, um, uh, you're thinking of the admissions, but also you're thinking about the other EL people. This is really good to hear um, because most places I go to, the focus is just the admissions, but you have these other EL pupils who are still progressing, who still have a need. So I wanted to say thanks, but yeah, I was quite interested about what your assessment was that you use. Yeah, great question. And actually, I forgot to mention that bit. So I'm glad you reminded me. Um, so actually, within the Flash Academy app, there is a language assessment in there. Um, so you, you would buy however many assessments you needed. It gets dropped into the child's profile. The child completes the language assessment in the Flash Academy app. And then, um, and then you would get a profile from that. And that would, because it has a, um, on your, when you would log in as an admin, you would then get all that data and all that information from there. But we use the Flash Academy one because we use Flash Academy. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Thanks, thanks for coming on. 
And uh, yeah, I'm glad you, glad you asked the question that you put in the chat. So thank, thank you for that. Glad to kick yourself off. Uh, I've got Jane and Louise. Jane, do you want to go first? It's just your, your next on my little gallery at the top there. Yes. Um, the age group, we have children coming in from reception and we go all the way up to year seven, which actually is um, well, I'm at an international school. So uh, we have NYP2 and so on. Um, what age group do you find that you can actually start using this with? Because when our reception children come in sort of four years old, um, it's, it's so traumatic for them. Is it possible to use Flash Academy for the little ones? I agree with you. We don't use it for the little ones either. We mm. use it from um, the end of year one upwards. Oh, um, so yeah. mainly starting in year two or end of year one. But yeah, um, but a lot, I mean, we're probably quite similar. Most the vast majority of our children who start school in reception don't speak English. Um, so then a lot of time is spent in reception on learning the language. But because there are so many of them who don't speak English, mm. we do focus our teaching on all of the children. But like you say, it is really traumatic. So finding ways to make it less traumatic, like getting the parents involved, bringing the parents in, um, making sure the activities are, are accessible for all learners you know disregarding whether they have english or not yeah um, can help but yeah i understand but i agree yeah year two upwards we use it year two upwards okay fine thank you okay thank you very much Shane. and i was going to go to louise but i can see there's, there's lots of movement there louise are you, have you come on to ask us a question or have you i have yeah all good One. thank you can you hear me <laughs> we, we can hear you can see we can see your notes as well rather than you but that's fine oh hang on sorry <laughs> that's that. Is that better that's much better, thanks. Fantastic. Please. Thanks ever so much. It's been really helpful. Claire, just a quick question. We've had Flash Academy for about three weeks now um, and are trying to assess children. Do you always assess one to one or do you, one at a time? Or can you set up a group spread out in a room with different um, tablets to do the assessment or do you do them one to one, please? Oh, good question. Um, I don't know the answer to that one, really. I, we, do use, we do use them in groups. Um, are you talking about the actual assessment on yeah. the Academy for the EAL? Yeah. 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 Um, we've done it. We have done it in larger groups. It depends on how many children we have. So yeah. I don't have one set way of doing it. But um, I guess Flash Academy would be the people to talk to. To ask. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I just thought I'd see what you'd know. That's fine. I just thought, oh, as we're on and we're just starting to get it going. We've got so many children that we want to get through. It's just the best way of getting them assessed and then, you know, working with them from yeah. that but yeah brilliant it's thank you to, it's great to use as a baseline it's really good yeah. to have that solid evidence and the solid data to see yeah. the progression there because they do make tons of progress and having Lovely. that baseline is brilliant yeah it's a good place to start super yeah. thank you no problem okay wonderful <laughs> thanks Louise. thanks for, thanks for joining us and thanks for the free tour of your school as well was helpful um Claire, i've just got a few questions from the chat i know people have, have asked them twice because they're obviously keen to get them answered so if I can just run through them. Um, one question was, um, do, the, do the children need to have PCs and internet connection of a certain standard at home or does it, does it work independently of that? No, you do it on your phone. That's what we, we, we um, okay. years ago when we had, well, we, we, you know, we've never got any money, have we, schools? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, um, we, we, uh, we did buy a bank of, um, of tablets. We bought some cheapo ones. Um, which did the job so that you don't have to buy expensive ones we bought a set of 32 tablets um, and they get taken out as and when for children to use flash academy okay. what we then did sorry what we then yeah. did is we asked parents and local residents and people that we know to donate old smartphones okay yeah yeah, yeah. So we then wiped the smartphones um, or make sure they're wiped and then put them on the wi-fi because it's an app you can use it on whatever device really so yeah. we've then got those smartphones the fact that they can also use them on their phones at home just makes life easier as well so we don't have a, we don't have a certain amount just dedicated to flash academy because we don't have that much money <laughs> okay thank you um another a few quick ones we just picked these off i know we're up against time um someone asked me i can't remember now, now who um do children need to be literate in their own home language to use flash academy uh, no, not necessarily, because Flash Academy has an audio. They need to. They need to be literate in. No, they don't need to be literate. They they need to be able to speak in their home language. They yeah. don't need to recognise words in their home language. Okay. Yeah, because there's the good. audio function on there. Um, okay. Because yeah, whoever that question asked, uh, whoever asked that question, great question. We often find that a lot of our children can't can't read or write in their home language. Um, 
and and Flash Academy recognised that and de developed the audio yeah. button for that. So that's really good. Uh, I'm trying to keep a record of who's asked me these things, but the questions flick through and then they, they disappear again. Um, someone's asked me if there's a, if, you, if you have a training protocol for your buddies. So do you have a, a particular set of instructions in place to, to, to help the buddies? Um, we do. It's based around um, this is what you need to show them. So we just have a list of places they need to take them um, relevant to our school, playground, toilet, kitchen, mm. um, things like that and just about you know we, we do a lot of work with our children on emotion coaching and about being a good friend so it's just about this is a very important job for you these are the things they need to know but then also it's your job to make them feel welcome and make them feel valued and all of those things but okay. it'd be great you could develop that really easily with like a school council if you have one they could they could even write that themselves okay great and, and, and my last one sorry how often do you instruct on vocabulary I mean, maybe how long's a piece of string is it? Do you have a particular set amount of time or as, as, as much as you possibly can? So vocabulary instruction can be really quick. I whizzed through it then, that one, that one um, slide there. You can do it in probably about three or four minutes and it needs to be quick and, and then you just need to move on. So we do that in every lesson. So where I said we have text in every lesson, we have text mm -hmm. in every lesson and we have, voc we have one piece of vocabulary from that text that we instruct mm -hmm. on and then we move on. Okay, thank you. Um, the, 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 there are so few questions coming in, but I think we're really against time. Just as well, it, <laughs> again, I was just going to ask you one, it just flipped off my screen just as I was going to ask you. Um, someone's asked me what was the name of the language programme you spoke of at the start of your presentation? That was JJ. Um, our own language programme that we developed ourselves. Oh, okay. So we just, okay. we just wrote ourselves our own scheme of work of what we felt our children needed to know when they came in. And we have a booklet for that which we just created okay thank you thank you so much for, the, for that quick fire round um i won't tell you what your score was but you did very well um <laughs> so yeah so times again so i haven't got time to pick up all the other questions but uh, other questions that will be keep keep firing them in to, to either to claire or to us here at nht um we, we will send you some uh, an email at the end of the course with materials and we'll try and pick up on those questions there as well so and uh, there are too many questions and really we've got time to get through um claire i just want to say uh, thank you so much for being with us and thank you for showing your enthusiasm um for, for for the flash academy's work and for and for your passion in teaching young people uh, with additional languages and and helping them get through uh, in school life and 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 in, and in the real world so thank thank you so much for being with us today and we've had great feedback in the chat so thank you for that um i just want to uh, uh say thank you for that and um just to say uh if you've got any questions uh we've got your email but but drop us a line at events at nht.org.uk uh, that's probably the best way to get us um have a look at our website for details of our wellness and protect program uh, and indeed details of nht membership if you if you're interested in that or know someone who would be um, and uh, yeah, get in touch with us that way and we'll, we'll, we'll offer whatever help we can. Um, and just a quick plug if I can, while people are still with us, we've got a um, number of courses still coming up through the NHT before the end of term. Um, so we've got uh, one on middle leadership tomorrow. Um, next week we've got courses on appraisals and difficult conversations and executive headship uh, and our inspiring leadership conference at the end of the week. Uh, and then in July, we've got a school business leaders conference and a course on building a successful multi-academy trust. So lots of CPD available through NHT. Um, so if you're interested in that, check our website for the details. It's all available to look at there. Um, so I just lose me to say thank you so much, Claire. Thank you to Flash Academy, uh, NHT's partner, for sponsoring us today, really, and working with us. And Claire, thank you so much. And I'll, I'll give you the final word. I think it's one of the best things for you to say. No, just thank you ever so much for joining. It's great to be in a in a virtual room of like-minded people. So thank you for the invite. Okay, thank thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for joining. It's lovely lovely to see people today, uh, and thank you so much, Claire. And we'll see you next time. Okay, thank you. <laughs>